man that went with them. You ought to underline that. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abram, Abraham said to the young man, Stay here with the donkey, with the lad, and I will go yonder and worship. Underline worship. And we will, we will come back to you. We will come back to you. Genesis chapter 26. Years later, Isaac is grown up. And Isaac dug, dug again the wells which he had dug in the days of his Abraham, his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which the father had called them. And Isaac servants dug again the, in the valley and found a well of running water there. Father, pray with me, church. I pray for the anointing to preach thy word. And Lord, I rebuke any hindrances. And I pray for your glory to come down and lives to be changed around these altars. We thank you for that, Lord, and we praise you for it. And the church said, Amen. Amen. I want to preach to you just a few moments upon the subject of engaged. Of engaged. Webster's Dictionary defines it as something to bind, to enter into a marriage or a conflict or contract, or to interlock to pledge oneself. In other words, I've signed up, I'm here for victory, I am locked into what God has promised, and the church must declare, it's settled, I'm going all the way. I just want to know how many's made up your mind that you're going all the way. Come on, let me ask you again. How many's made up their mind to go all the way? In this journey, you're going to get your feelings hurt. In this journey, you're going to get, people are going to let you down. In this journey, you're going to get hurt. And you're going to get a knocked around. Amen. But you've got to make up your mind that no matter what comes or goes, it's settled. I, I've made a contract with my God, and I'm going all the way. Can you give the Lord a hand cup of praise? You've got to make up your mind that you're going to live for him. Because I'm going to tell you the reality of it is there's mean people out there. There's phonies out there. There's hypocrites out there. There's liars out there. Come on, somebody. I realize that they can even be in the church, but aren't you glad? It means still yet, there's the redeemed in the church. There's the forgiven in the church. There's those that have been set free in the church. There's those that have been changed by the blood of the Lamb. Give him praise right now. But I'm engaged. I don't care what people say, I'm still going to church. You ought to make up your mind. I, I remember years ago, I preached a, a, a revival at a church. Uh, and 10 years later, uh, at that church, I became their pastor. Uh, and 10 years later, there was people that were there uh, that uh, year, 10 years before. And then there was people that were gone. Uh, uh, yes, some could have died, some could have moved. Uh, but my friend, you ought to make up your mind unless you die, unless you move. Uh, if someone comes here 10 years later and God hasn't come, they're going to find you worshiping God because you've been made a contract. You've engaged with Him. You put your blinders on. And you're not looking at people, but you're looking to Jesus. Because Jesus has never lied to you. He's always kept His word. You know how much He loves you? He loves you enough to not give you everything you think you need. Come on, somebody. Amen. So we made a contract. It's settled. I'm going. No matter what comes, I'm with him. I'm not going to let go because I've come. Come on, somebody. Uh, Abraham made a, God had called him uh, a number one. Uh, so in other words, if I made up my mind I'm going to serve God, there's going to be some test. The enemy is going to see just how much you love God. Amen. There's some people out there, when they know you're a Christian, they're just going to find out, well, I'm just going to find out how much Jesus is in them. Come on, somebody. So number one, there's the test. 
Abraham is called out of his native country to a land that God had promised him. He had never seen this land. The internet wasn't established at that time. Al Gore wasn't around. Well, never mind. Anyway, you got it. All right. Thank you. I mean, there wasn't, you couldn't, you you didn't have cell phones. You didn't have the newspaper. How many remembers what a newspaper looks like? I mean, you didn't have satellite TV. Abraham did not know what he was going to encounter. But God had promised him a powerful place. He said, I'm going to take you to a, and I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to make you a great name. Your descendants will be as the sands of the sea and of the stars of the heaven. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3. I will bless those. Listen to what God promised uh, the house of Israel. I will bless those who bless you. uh, And I will curse those who curses you. uh, And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I I believe one of the reasons why God has not already brought judgment on America is because we made up our mind to stand with the house of Israel. And we bless them. Come on, somebody. That's God's word. Oh, but aren't you glad? He said, through your seed, your families will be blessed. Listen to me, Daddy. Let me tell you something. There is a such thing as a father's blessing. I, I want to challenge you to live for God. I, that you can bring the blessing of the Father upon your children. And let them know that they are blessed because you're serving God. Let them know not because you're perfect, but because you call upon a God that's able. And a Father that loves you. I, and a Father that won't give up on you. I, and the father will still look when you're the prodigal son and waiting for you to come back. Somebody help me preach this morning. Yeah, there's going to be a test. Yeah, there's going to be troubles. Yeah, there's going to be valleys. But through the valley, he'll be there. In the midst of the storm, he'll be there. In the valleys, come on, somebody. God won't give up on you. Amen. Hallelujah. God made Abraham a promise. Amen. Do you? He said, you got to love me more than you love your wife. Amen. Because if you love me, you'll love your wife. That's right. mm, come on, somebody. Amen. Don't tell me that a husband that abuses his wife and claims to be a Christian, there's something mixed up with that. There's something, same the other way, if a wife's abusive to her husband and says they love the Lord, there's something messed up about that. Right. Mm-hmm. Help me preach this morning. Amen. You see, He says, do you love me more than your wife or your son? Amen. For God must be first in your life, your relationship. Because the greater, amen, that you get connected with God, the better you're going to be everywhere else. Come on. The Bible tells us that Abraham was called by God. He said, "I, I, I I want you to take your son, your only son, and I want you to sacrifice him. The Bible in the King James, it says tempt, but what that really means is to honor to honor, I want you to honor me by making sure I'm first. And so the story tells us, he says, take your son, your only son, which is a type of Christ. And you're going to Mount Moriah, where what's Mount Moriah actually means Jehovah is provider. Now I know that you know where we're going with Jehovah Jireh, or God is God is my provider, but my, my provider. But in Mount Moriah it says jo- Jehovah is. I want you to get that Jehovah is provider. In other words, uh, every source you need comes from Almighty God. Everything you're going to ever want comes from Almighty God. Uh, he's not going to forsake you even in the test of times when everybody else leaves you. Uh, come on, somebody, God's going to be there. Give him a hand clap of praise. I mean, you may be going through a test right now, but God hasn't forsaken you. Amen. Amen. So he says, take your son, which is a type of Christ. uh, And now I want you to be an example to your son. uh, Engage with God uh, so you can engage with your family and your friends. Uh, I want you to note something here. God didn't want Isaac uh, Isaac to be harmed because God abhorred human sacrifices. Uh, Abraham uh, was listening to the Lord. Uh, He was willing to follow God. He was engaged with God. God was telling Abraham uh, that he would redeem uh, mankind that through his seed would be the Savior, amen, uh, and that things would be, uh, amen, provided, uh, amen, through his seed. 
Notice he said, we're going to go up here. There's a three-day journey on the third day, which tells us of the resurrection. The way, the answer, the victory uh, is through your son. Uh, it's where God's going to provide uh, redemption. Uh, you got to remember every step they took on that mountain uh, reminded, uh, amen, Abraham, the Jehovah is a provider. Uh, every step, it had to be three long days uh, because here's Abraham. Uh, God had promised uh, through Abraham's seed, through his son, uh, that he would be the father of many nations. Uh, amen. The birth of his people would be his son. Uh, and now he's taking taking his son to sacrifice him. But I believe, uh, amen, that every step he took, he said, God, you're faithful. Uh, God, you're a good God. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, it may have been a long journey you're in, uh, but God's still there. Can you give him praise? I want to share something with you. When you're studying for a message, you, you, you really want to be right on. I got several messages I could preach, but when God begins to stir your heart about something, obviously I hope I know most of the people that are going to show up here. Hopefully we're faithful people. Amen? But then God knows who's going to be here. And why I'm preaching this message is because God wants to tell you, you may be going through a test, but he's still there. You may feel like God's 100 miles away, but he's still there. Could you imagine the journey that Abraham took as he said, now guys, you wait right here, but we're going up there. But it was a three-day journey. They were heading out Mount Moriah. And there was a test. Abraham was listening to the Lord. Are you listening to God? Are you there? Are you in that test? There was two things that Abraham engaged with the father. Listen to these things. First, he said, your son. Son, we're going up here. And God, and, and, and God has told us, we're, I, I, this is what I've got to do. Now, this, this Isaac wasn't some little boy. He was, a, he was a full-grown man. He could have probably stopped his father from putting him on that altar, but he did not. There was some have preached that there was a battle going on. There wasn't a battle. I mean, Isaac was willing to do whatever his father said because his father said, no matter what, if, uh, if you die and you're burning ashes, my God made a promise that he will raise you out of those ashes and he will form your body back and you will come back because we're going, that's faith and the second thing he gave his son was worship and it's the first time mentioned in the Bible is right here he said we're going and we're coming back and we're going to worship God, come on somebody let amen, worship him and give him praise, hallelujah the first time worship is used so he tells Isaac, I want you to get this. He says, now, carry the wood. We've got to have fire. We've got to have wood to have fire. Amen. That tells us that it, of the burden barrier. Who's your, who's, who's, who, who carries your burdens? <laughs> Amen. Isaac was carrying the wood. That's telling us that he, Jesus is going to carry your burdens. Uh, well, amen. The, uh, Miss Sandra talked about it in her, le in her lesson. Uh, amen. There's a song that says, leave your burdens. Uh, <laughs> help me out there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. In other words, give them to God. Isaac is telling us, uh, if they, when you look at the picture in the Bible, he says, the Father says, here, here is the burdens. Uh, here's the burdens of your people. Here's the burdens you're going to go through. Uh, and you're going to carry them up to the mountain. Uh, oh, come on, somebody. And they're going to be burned. Uh, come on, give him praise right now. Isaiah 53 and verse 4, surely he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Uh, yet we have seen him and stricken uh, and smitten by God and afflicted. Uh, he engaged with the heavenly father. Amen. Abraham carries the fire, which represents the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, let's go there. Jesus ascends to the right hand of the father. Amen. And that uh, when the Holy Ghost come down with the father's sin, was approval of the sacrifice uh, that Jesus made. Uh, can you give him praise right now amen come on somebody and then there's the knife 
which represents the death of Christ and cutting away our flesh. In other words, in the test is when the, amen, the flesh is going to be cut away. That's when God's working on you. Amen. God's not forsaken. Amen. He's still working on you. And then Abraham says, well, where's the lamb? God will, or Isaac says, where's the lamb? Amen. Abraham, God will provide. Amen. He didn't totally understand, but he knew his God was faithful. He knew if a son died, God would raise him up because he already declared we're going to the top of the mountain and we are coming back. Come on somebody. Jesus laid on the cross of Calvary and you can be set free. You can make it. There's a second thing I want to talk to you about this morning is obedience. Everybody say obedience. That's the hard thing, isn't it? Obedience. Sometimes we obey because we don't want to get caught. Amen? But obedience, the Bible says, is better than what? Abraham lays the wood, which represents also the cross, because Isaac is laid on the wood. He's willing, for he wasn't made. Obedience is coming because he's laying down. And, and the father binds upon him on the altar. The knife is raised. Abraham is engaged with the father. His son and Abraham are believing that God's going to do something because God had made a promise. You ever feel like the promise that you feel like God gave you through the word that it ain't going to happen? Now notice I said through the word. Some people have come up and told me God promised to... Me, I'd be a millionaire. I've never read that in the Bible. God supply all my needs. Amen. Amen. You're saying I can't be a, a millionaire. I'm praying that God blesses you and you are a millionaire and you pay tithes. That's right. Amen. God's waiting. He's waiting on you to obey him. Amen. Obedience is some not always easy. Can you shout Amen. It wasn't easy for Abraham to raise that knife. It probably took all his strength. This is my son, my only son. And God says, I want you to sacrifice him. He raises the knife. He's waiting on you. Years later, let's take a pause for a moment. Years later, because you know what happens if you've ever read the Bible. You know Isaac lives. We'll get back to the story in a moment, but years later, Isaac is blessing his children just like his father did. You see, that day that that, that happened on Mount Moriah, I believe Abraham gave Isaac the knife. He passed it on down. He also passed the fire down, which is Pentecost. Come on, somebody. Isaac was ready to go forward. In Genesis 26, there's obedience. In verse 3 and 4, there's a promise and faith. In verse 12, there's seed that's sowed. There's the witness. Isaac believed what his father had said. Amen. Abraham raises the knife. And the angel of the Lord calls out. It's always good when you hear God say your name. <laughs> Can you shout amen? Amen. Amen. I, I want to hear it. One day when we stand before him, I want to hear, well done thy good and faithful servant. Amen. And he reads my name out of the book of life. Can you shout amen? It's good that God calls your name. Give him praise right now. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 18. Uh, in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed uh, because you have obeyed my voice. Uh, not only do we have the test, uh, not only do we have obedience, uh, but then we have the fulfillment of God's promise. Uh, in Genesis chapter 22 and verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called uh, him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Uh, so he said, here I am. Uh, amen. And, uh, and he, uh, you see, where, you're, where God leads you to be is where you need to be, where God can talk to you. 
Mm, let me go on. And he said, do not lay a hand on the lad or do anything to him, for I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he looked there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. You know, I've ever thought of something. Amen. Until then, Abraham didn't see that ram. Think about it. Now, if you th- now, h- how many have ever been around uh, uh, any type of an animal that has horns and have got caught in anything? Do you think that animal was just laying there? I mean, I mean, where did it come from? I don't know. But God, Abraham didn't see it till he needed to see it. Abram didn't need it till he really needed it. Are you with me? Uh, in other words, sometimes we want God to show us the whole plan of everything before we ever get there, and that's not going to happen. What you need is what God's going to give you, and no matter what it is, uh, what you need for today, God's going to give you today. Uh, and what you need for tomorrow, God will show up tomorrow. And what you need to, the next day, God will give. Come on, somebody. Amen. There was a ram caught in the thicket. Hallelujah. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up in burnt offering uh, instead of a son. Uh, amen. And Abraham called the name of the place. Uh, if it's in the King James, it says Jehovah Jireh, and the Lord will provide. Uh, notice Mount Moriah said God, God, Jehovah is provider. And now we've got the Lord will provide. And he said to this day, uh, amen, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Uh, could you imagine how Abraham and Isaac were worshiping? He said, we're going to worship. Don't you think Isaac jumped up a little bit and got a little bit happier? There's a ram. God made a way. Come on, give him praise. Now, I'm just thinking like I would think. Believe in God. Trust in God. I take that long journey up there, Patrick. I'm telling my son, trying to be the father I'm supposed to be, God's going to provide. God's going to provide. Amen. Amen. Where's, and then you get everything up there, and the question is asked, well, where's the sacrifice God's going to provide? Amen. He's starting to write, he picks up the knife. He's probably sharpened it. He's, you know, I don't, he may have been paused a little bit. I don't know. You know, I, I'm, I'm thinking on the human side. Eh? Anyway, I, and, he's th- and he's looking at that knife, and he's got his son laying there, there right there in front of him. Uh, he's got him on a pile of wood, so that means after he kills him, he's going to set this on fire. And I'm thinking, hmm. I don't know about this, but anyway, he starts raising up. He said, I, I just could imagine in my mind, he said, hey man, God will provide. God will provide. And I, I, I'm thinking if I was Isaac looking up at that knife thinking that thing is sharp. Uh, anyway, uh, and it's going to come down. And it, Come on, do you understand what I'm saying? I, I, I realize uh, I'm talking about faith, uh, but I want to be real. In other words, uh, I trust God. You believe God. And the devil's going to try to tempt you and discourage you. Uh, but Abraham didn't quit. He didn't let off. Uh, He had a contract with God. uh, And when the knife started to come down, uh, the angel said, stop. He stopped. Uh, Amen. And there was a ram in the thicket right over there. Uh, He untied. uh, uh, He got the ram. He put the ram there. He killed the ram. He took Isaac off before he did that. I think they were shouting and praising God uh, because God provided. uh, And if God loved them, he loves you. Can you give him praise? You see, many believe that this is the place of the threshing floor for David, where Solomon's temple was built. Many believe, many theologians theologians believe that this is actually where the holies of holies set the presence of God. Years later, we see Isaac digging some wells. God had to get Isaac to a certain place. Maybe God's got to get you to a certain place. Isaiah, or Genesis 26, verse 25 says, So he built an altar there. He, he had to get Isaac to a place. And he called on the name of the Lord, and he pitched his tent there, and their Isaac's servants dug a well. And Isaac said to them, Why have you come to me since you hate me? And sent me away from you. But they said, now listen to this. You see, Isaac had had certainly seen the power of God. 
heard the testimony of his father and seen God provide. Because if God can do it once, he can do it twice. Are you all with me? And we have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. So we say, let there now be an oath between us, between you and us. Let us make a covenant with you that you will do us no harm since we have touched, we have not touched you. And since we've done nothing to you but good, I've sent you away in peace. Listen to this. Because they recognize you are now blessed of the Lord. Hmm. You see, sometimes we, we don't realize where we're headed. Sure, there's a test. Sure, there's obedience. But God's just getting where he, getting you in the place where he can truly bless you. And until you're willing to get in that place, you won't be blessed. No matter what it is, if you're not being obedient in your giving, God's word ties his hands. If you're not willing to let your heart be right, God won't bless you. Now his mercy's there. And we've learned how to live under the curse and survive. But I don't want to survive. I want to live in the abundance of God. I want to live in his word. And what I can't do, now that's not an excuse not to be obedient. You ever heard someone, well, I can't do that? Yeah, you can. Get off your rump and do something. You can. Excuse me. Should have said that differently, I guess. But I challenge you. Sometimes our relationship with God is miserable because we're not connected like we are to be. We're not obedient like we are to be. I was a whole lot happier when I obeyed my mom and dad <laughs> than when I didn't. It was pretty miserable when I made mama mad at me. But you'll never be happy, friend. Let me talk to you. I, Isaac was blessed of God because he became obedient. Let me talk to you. You're not going to find the peace that you need, the joy that you need, but anything in Jesus. You won't find it in man, you won't find it in women, you won't find it in money. And you won't find it in the excuses that you're making, why not to live for God because someone's done you wrong or whatever it may be. You'll only find it and say, okay, God. I'm going to give you control. I'm going to give it all to you. And what you truly can't do, God will help you. Are you all with me? What you can't do, God does. God, notice God provided water from a rock, but he didn't help them drink it, did he? God rained manna from heaven, but they had to pick up and eat it. God split the Red Sea, but he didn't pick up and carry them. They had to walk on dry ground. <laughs> Are you all with me? David, David, with the help of the Lord, defeated the giant, but God didn't throw the sling or the stone in the sling. He didn't pick up the sword and cut the giant's head off. David did. So I challenge you to make a contract with God. Yeah, there'll be some test, but if you'll obey him, there will be a fulfillment of his blessings. Would you stand to your feet, please?